I've just finished squaring up the diff to the car. Now, it's around about 100 mil, maybe a touch more that the rear diff's moved back. I want about 50 mil clearance here, like the front, because we can always chop the back out and that won't matter so much. I'd rather make the long wheelbase, make the wheelbase longer than have it shorter. Now, this rear diff is about 40 mil narrower than the front diff. So I wanted to leave these, this, um, all this uh, drum brake and whatnot on there because this backing plate is quite thick and I think that's a good reference point for measuring. Just makes it a little bit easier. I'd rather it there and not there. But we're going to be putting... Dad's actually had these for years. I didn't know he had them. These are off a uh, 75 series cruiser. They're a full floating hub. Oh, oh. They're a full floating hub and I want to put these on here. Now... What I've, from what I've measured, I still need to get one and properly measure it, but I got the measurements off the internet. An 80 series short side axle will work with the diff, diff width that I want to run. So obviously it's going to match the front um, and I've got to allow for a disc brake and, um, and we'll have full floating hub rear end. That way if we break an axle, all you've got to do is unbolt, undo these nuts and slide your axle out and you can fix it or do a... Um, wheel bearing it's exactly like when you're doing the front one you just tap out the races and tap new ones in not like on something like this how you got to cut up the old bearing off and it just i want it nice and simple and easy for maintenance so we'll whack those full floaters on a bit later because there'll be a little bit of a process we're going to have to machine off this end and work out our widths and um weld them on but for now, I can't do that anyway because I want axles. So when you weld them on, obviously they've got to run true so you get no binding with the axle. So for now, we'll get all our links in, get them all welded in, and then we'll, um, when the diff's ready to be pulled out to finish weld, that's when we'll do our full floating hubs. That actually fits pretty good. We gotta do a bit of guard work up here, sort of round that back out, but we've got our 50 mil gap at the front there. These are patrol rims, so they're not locating on the um, these drums quite right, on these hubs, sorry, but, because like I said before, we're gonna chuck the full floaters on there so these rims will be fine. And we're not too bad on our guard clearance. Yes, we'll be coming out another 20 mil but I'll just get slightly fatter um, mud guards and that'll look fine. It actually doesn't look too bad with 35s on it. The fronts have just got stock cruiser wheels on it, but if only I had another couple of wheels here, we'd be able to get a good look at how it's going to look in the end. Okay, I'm just going to let that cool down and then we can paint all this top section in. I won't paint the ends because obviously we've got to weld that to the frame, but while it's out, we might as well paint this and make it easy for ourselves. And uh, I just put this little gusset in here just to brace these two. And the reason it's on this sort of weird angle is just so I can uh, still get my socket on there to undo it.
we got our first top bracket on now and it's the bushing obviously the bolt holes there our bushing is going to have to sit forward of the truss simply because i got stuff back here the fuel tank cross member sits there there's a couple other hoses that sit there so bringing that forward more is just going to solve all our issues with clearances we're going to make a slight little dent in the tank to clear the rear pumpkin but besides that it's all going to clear fine now i quickly had to rip it out the car obviously because um there's no way i could do these in the car at full stuff it was just way too tight to get my hand in there i couldn't get any levels or anything in there so those mounts tacked on that actually come up not too bad it looks pretty good so i'm happy with that now with these upper arms i just got a set of these um these are just standard patrol rear upper control arms now i'm just going to use the bosses off the end because i got patrol rubber bushings in um the pretty much everywhere except the front lower control arms i thought i'd just stick with these at the top now i will have to cut that thing off i think that must be for vibration or something because it's quite heavy but but anyway these are upper arms because they're not out in the elements like no rocks or hit or anything will hit them these can be quite um these will be quite lightweight so we might uh put it in the lathe and we'll just machine these down a little bit and sleeve over the material i got These are probably the easiest set of arms I've ever done. I didn't even I barely notch the pipe here. I just took the paint off these factory arms and it just, with a bit of a love tap. All right, that's ready to be welded. What I'll do is I'll uh, weld around that later because this, even though these arms are second hand, these bushings are still pretty good, so Rather than wasting them, I'll press them out and then fully weld it. But this will be good enough for mock-up now. Our top arms are in finally you can see they the they did have to have the bend in it to clear the floor there i've got about 20 mil of clearance it's not ideal but for it to get full bump where it's sitting they had to have the bend in it i could have notched out the floor but i really didn't want to the seats right there and i have got other stuff there so i didn't want to notch it but 
pretty happy with how it's turned out. Now, we'll put the bottom arms in, they are made, but I do want to raise up those rear brackets simply because I got a good uh, amount of link separation with um, the way I've done them top brackets on the uh, truss. So we'll just slightly move those up a little bit. Rear suspension's all tacked in. Come up really well, I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty good what you envisioned in your head becomes reality. It's always like a satisfying feeling. All the holes and whatnot on the diff truss come up pretty good. It actually looks really good. Now we, what we can start doing is uh, measuring our shock lengths and um, what's gonna work with tail shaft angles because obviously if our shock is too long, you don't want to get binding in your rear unis or anything like that. And what sort of sucks with this, because it's so short, the tail shaft is quite short. So we're not going to be able to get the most amount of travel, but at least we're going to have no more rear steer like it did before. Um, we've got nice big long arms, so our wheel should drop near the vertical down. In the next one, we'll be setting up the rear coils, putting our shocks in, making all the bracketry to go with that and hopefully by then i'll have the springs for the coil over so we can set our ride height and then um it's all the little bibs and bobs from there so it's pretty much all the hard stuff is now done which is pretty cool so with the rear rear full float hubs i'm going to leave them for now just because i'm getting anxious i want to drive it again they can be done down the track it's simple as pull the diff out and we'll just have to cut in there Hopefully we'll be able to fit this sucker in the lathe and um, machine them off and put the full floaters on and then we'll have to get a couple of um, axles made or hopefully the 80 series if I can measure one, if someone will let me measure one. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.